Hi, everyone, and welcome. Today is the Saturday Human Colony Hukula webinar. It is Saturday, the 17th of November, 2018. And today in our room, on, on this side of the room, on the Google Plus side, we have Alisa, uh, Christine, Dave, Ian, Wendy, Marlena, Michelle, Reinhard, Sheer, Steve, and myself. And who do you have in your room, Jim? Angie, Barb, uh, Jean, Alex, Erica, Erica Lydia, uh, Ray, and David. A full room. Yeah. Okay, just for just to tell everyone, this is the Saturday Human Colony webinar. Our channel today will be our amazing Jim Charles. So we're so glad to have you here. And Great. know that last week you had a big uh, light language class that you did with together with will angie and wendy do you want to talk about that how that went was, um called um future em embrace and body and em emitting the true light mm. so it was really a wonderful class um i think that there's a couple people that were here in this room that were at the class and um are still buzzing about it it's it was a really powerful class. Awesome. Wendy, would you like to say something about that? You're muted. Mm, maybe she jumped away from some coffee. Okay, here I am. I forgot I've got a mute button on my mic too, so <laughs> sometimes I have both muted. Um, Yes, it was actually, I have to say, it was an incredibly a powerful experience uh, for me. Um, on both sides, um, and I the the feedback that I've received also from so many people has been very astounding. Um, per, for from a personal standpoint, delivering each one of those messages and having each one of um, each each person, I was guided to do a blessing for each person, and then Jim responded and interpreted each one of them for each person and it was one of the most profound experiences of my life since i began speaking languages and it's as if i have it's as if i have been experiencing this combination of all of them and several other people have said the same thing to me is it's as if everybody was receiving everybody's blessing in addition to their own personal blessing which which truly did help everybody push them out into really embracing and embodying and emanating their true light and and the changes that it's made in my life and their life since just in this last week um i've actually been very quiet this week <laughs> because of just integrating all of the information and the connections the um the channelings, the, all the information that's the downloads that have been coming through since that time in me and other people have been pretty profound. So I really look forward to more of these. And I thank all of you for participating. And you're gone. Yes. And, and I, I hope everybody really enjoyed, um, you know, four out of the class. Uh, thanks so much. You're cutting in and out. So I'm going to mute you. But thank you so much for sharing that. Um, thank you. So I know that you're going to have uh, another one coming up uh, in the future. Yes, but I'm not sure when. Okay, all right. Well, keep your eyes peeled for that. Then we'll do that. I, I actually had someone contact me about asking about if there was language gyms anymore, and I'm thinking maybe we should start something like that back up again. There's okay. Some light language stuff going on. Also, too, uh, in January, you have a uh, advanced – Galactic Reiki class coming on the January the 11th and the 12th. Is that correct? Or the 12th and the 13th. The 12th and the 13th. Um, hmm. Yes, I'm going to have the Galactic Reiki teachers class okay. to learn how to do uh, the in, in t attunements and the advanced Galactic Reiki portions so for those who have already taken the gal Galactic Reiki course. Okay. And are they going to be able to sign up for that on the website or we you send out a mailing? How are we going to let people know? Um, I'm going to let Max know that people are going to start uh, signing up for it. But if you want, if you're interested, let me know first at my email. Just get, let me know and I'll let him know that you're interested. 
Okay, we'll just start announcing it every week. On we haven't put a price tag on it yet, so I don't know how much it's really going to cost. But it's probably going to be two, three-hour classes. Okay, okay, perfect. And then, Ian, on Friday nights, we have the uh, channeling practice group. Do you want to tell everyone what that's about? Sure. My name is Ian, and um, weekly I host the channeling practice group. It's um, on Facebook is where you can find it. And the name of it is Hukalo Weekly Channeling Practice Group. And it's a place where everyone who wishes to channel and can channel gets together in a safe environment. And the non-channeling people learn from the people who can channel. And we've had some pretty good success. Uh, it's free to join, to join the group. And we host uh, the meeting every Friday night at 4.30 Eastern Standard Time. Perfect. So if you're interested in that, just join the group on Facebook, the Hukalo Weekly Channeling Practice Group. Thanks. Perfect. And then also just to let everyone know that Human Colony does have a book. It's called From the Galaxy with Love, a Lightworker's Handbook. It's a book of the culmination of many years of Jim Charles's channeling. It was written together with uh, Jim and Max, and it's available on Amazon.com. And you can also get it as an audio book as well as a a download so please check it out uh, from the galaxy with love the light workers handbook it's gotten extraordinary reviews it's a wonderful wonderful book on the truths of the universe and everything that's going on so please check it out on amazon.com and also one thing last thing if you would like to become a member of human colony you can go to hukalo.org forward slash webinars and you can join the club hukalo and that for a small donation, a one-time donation of $120 or $10 a month, you can support all of the, the work that we're doing at Human Colony that allows us to bring you these free webinars with all these different channelers every week. And also you have a front row seat when Jim is channeling in the room and you can ask him your questions directly. So thank you everyone who is a member. We are one big happy family here and uh, we just keep growing. And lastly, if you can subscribe to the channel, if you haven't, please do. So <laughs> now it's time we got to pray. <laughs> now we're going to pray. Now we're going to do some blessings. Why don't we start with Dave? Dave, why don't you go ahead? Hi, hey, everybody. Mm. Hello. Baruch Shirak. Ewa Shinda. Ewa Nasi Nahute Branga. Eya shande be unda na hai o feo jande baroko beshinda na hoe bushunda eyo anda na hote brang ewa shigonai na hote bashanda. May this day bring the end to great challenges in your life and bring more light to your life in the way of guidance and direction. We are praying for you and knowing that you are moving in a positive way toward a great ascension and a new evolution. Thank you. Wendy, go ahead. Meshia Sanatalia Maloko Chatukwala Mini Malialu. Marianonia Colocotere Chese Samura Shia Lundari Mariano Cuabari Hano Polongo Yashote Piharo Diando Reche Caliando Sonalia Loco Roco Hohela Leander Se Cayandor Shevo Lohoro Shanakaya Salacala Machiasho. As you hold the light one with another, be kind, compassionate, and loving. <laughs> You are a very diverse people and you do not always see things the same. So understand that you are all children of God and that you all have your own opinions and ways to move forward. Blessings to you all. Thank you. And Angie, go ahead. Guru Otiskwa Nita Kuru Atatskina Urabotua Niakarapata Ukarasamaratskutu Rabotokuta Rabikata Ushtagrabatata Nurabotuti Abarutua Tkba 
i sarabataka ua astabarakadi astkoroa tāna ni atukua roa mokotoro ti askanaria. There are many of you moving in different directions, but all moving toward the light. Remember that all of your missions do not have to be the same or have the same kind of direction, but it, they are all pieces to a great puzzle that when you put them together, puts together a great and understandable true light in the world. Bring yourself to this light and understand that you are part of a greater part of God's will. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty. We do have some requests. So um, we we have the request for Takar, Grindel, Melchizedek, as well as Ish, uh, Archangels, and there was one I'm missing, AI, and insectoids. Insectoids. Babaji. 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 Sorry. Oh, Babaji. Yeah, Bab. <laughs> We're getting Babaji. Babaji and Uriel as well. I'm seeing in the chat. Okay. Very good. Perfect. All right. Very good. And I will um, do a small meditation, and I will be back with okay. whoever is first. Okay. Much perfect. love, everybody. Much love, everyone. Thank you. I am Melchizedek. Welcome, Melchizedek. I was sent to you today with some messages. I do not know if everyone knows who I am, but I am the first priest of the Bible. You will find my name in the book of Genesis. I am the keeper of peace. I am, was from Salem. But my message today is about the end of time, or what they call the end of time. It really is not the end of time, but the end of an era and a beginning of a new time. What I wanted to talk about is a portion of the Bible that speaks about your young men and your old men. Your young men will have visions or, or dreams, and your old men will have visions or dreams. I'm not sure which ones was associated with what, which, but it will happen to both. This is a day and age when dreams and visions are part of your world, and you will know by their lucidity and their power what they mean in some ways, or what to share, and who to share them with. There are some dreams and visions that you must share only with those that are close to you. But there are some dreams and visions that must be shared with the world, because this is a time when information is necessary for people to survive. There is a great number of people that need to, to be awakened. There is a great number of people that need to know that God exists in a very powerful way. There's a number of people that need to know that they are part of God's missions. And they do not know that yet. They have not awakened yet. They have not come to life yet. But this is a day and age where that will be necessary. Things will happen to wake people up. Things will happen to shake people up. And things will happen to make a difference in the world 
in many different ways. I've come here to introduce myself because you will hear from me again at some point. There are many of you that have been an ordained to the priesthood of Melchizedek. I hope you know what that means, and I hope you take it seriously, and I hope you do not take it for granted. For it is not something just for a tax cut. It is not something just for being able to do weddings or baptisms. But for those of you that take it more seriously and know exactly what it is, it is about preaching the Word of God, carrying the Word of God with you to others, standing tall in your beliefs and knowing that you are doing the right thing and being a good example. I know, I am not going to preach, but I'm going to let you go. But I did want you to know that this is a very important time, and it's a time of awakening. And I hope that you all look around you and see all the eyes that are closed, eyes that need opened. And take a little responsibility for that, since you know who God is, and you are an example of God. Not that I want you to go and preach to them, but I want you to be an example to them so that they may see the joy, love, compassion, and wonderfulness of God through you. You don't have to say a word, except maybe hello. Just be engaging. Know your heart. And remember to brighten other hearts as well. Just by saying hello can actually change a person's day. You may not think so, but think about times when people were kind to you, when you started the day not so well, and then someone said to you, good morning, how are you? And you, you uh, were a little shocked, perhaps, and said, uh, oh, um, I'm fine. By saying that you are fine changes things a little bit because it's a positive reaction. Positive reactions have a way of making their way into your life. Negative reactions have a way of making themselves go into your life as well. So it is possible that you saying that you are fine, even though you may not have been, might have helped you to feel a little bit more fine. And the very fact that someone acknowledged you made you feel a little bit more fine. And it brought the day to a different kind of a moment and hopefully changed that moment from that moment on. I love you all very much. And guess what? I'm going to say hello to every single one of you and hope that that makes you feel a little better. We do have a question, if it's possible, yes. from Jay. Jay's new yeah. to the group, so please everyone welcome Jay. But Jay does have a question and had requested Melchizedek. Jay, if you can unmute, you can ask your question. If not, you can type it quickly in the chat. But there you Is go. Okay. Jonathan? Oh, Hello. Jonathan, sorry. Jonathan, go ahead. Jonathan. Hello. Greetings. Hi. My name isn't Jonathan, but um, if he wants to speak with you, you can. Oh, this is Juan. And that's correct. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I just can read what's the name is on the thing, so I don't know. <laughs> no worries. No worries. <laughs> Welcome, whomever you are. It's well, first Juan. Off, first off, I want to say um, 
Thank you for coming. Um, it's interesting because I've heard about you by name only, not necessarily what you've done. But when you came through, I felt a connection with your words, with the peace, your messages. And it was positively overwhelming for some reason. And that's interesting to me. Every now and then that happens when someone comes through. I would like to um, once again thank you and ask you if you have any advice for me because I feel like the work that I'm going to be doing in the near future, it's very much related with everything that you said. Thank you. Absolutely. You are going to have to be a good example for what you are going to be doing. But let me tell you something immediately. That example starts now, and you are already a good example for the most part. Maybe not to your family, but to everyone outside of your family. <laughs> I think that you know what I mean. But I do. I think that you are a very positive person for the most part. You try to look for all the things that can be done in a very positive way. But you are very particular about what you want to do. So this is a time when you have to push that aside and learn about life in a more general way before you learn it in a more particular way. I am someone that is a big fan of who you are. I understand that you have a great deal of love for mankind and for all those outside this realm, aliens and spirits, ascended masters and angels, you, you respect them all and you are aware of them all and you want to work with them all. I know this. And I thank you for your aspirations to that higher place. But for now, you must learn in general about the people of the third dimension and how to treat them. For they are probably the most difficult for you to be kind to in many ways. You are a wonderful and kind person. And I thank you very much for your question. Is thank there you very much. There is another question here in the room. Perfect. Go ahead. And then Marlene has a question after that. Go ahead. Very well. Good morning. So I don't know anything about you, but um, two months ago around, your name kept going through my head. Um, yes. Can you tell me why? It is the time for me to make myself known. Mm -hmm. It is a time for people to know what I stand for. There was a time in history long, long ago where I was the very first priest in the Bible. Mm -hmm. They called me the Melchizedek, of course, and it means of a kingdom, I believe. At that time, it meant something about being a king. And also, I was from Salem, which means peace. And I did my blessing on Abraham. Okay. He was the first and one of the few that I gave my personal blessing to. But I am here to announce that there will be a greater understanding of who I am as far as spirit is concerned. I am a man of spirit and bring to the table all those things that God wants for this world at this time. There are others out there that are in the world at this time as well. Isaiah is here, Elijah is here, Moses is here, and now Melchizedek has been here for a while, but I've been silent. You're welcome, thank you. Thank you. Marlene, go ahead. Oh, uh, greetings Melchizedek. Um, greetings, first and foremost, Melchizedek. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> um, thank you. I, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you very much. Um, I was I felt very honored to work with you and collaborate with you in 2013. 
on a specific yeah. assignment. So I just want to say thank you very much. And thank you because you took that assignment seriously and to heart and I bless you and thank you for it. Thank you. Um, you just mentioned blessing. Uh, it's not a question really, but it's if you would bless us with a blessing. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. One moment, please. From the God of heaven, who is all powerful, all knowing, all understanding and all loving. I ask him to bring to you all peace that goes beyond understanding and beyond what you feel in your normal day-to-day -day life because you need to find this peace within you. And as you feel this peace, I want you to grow in it as the person that he created you to be, as the person that God wants to use for the greater good of the world. Shine your light. Make sure that you are not hiding it. And make sure you are not ashamed of who you are or God, and that you are able to stand confidently in front of the world and give your messages or at least admit that God is on your side and that he is part of who you are. Let his light be your light and be the light for others so that they may not be lost. For if they see and feel those things that are a part of your light, perhaps they will want to join it. And God will open his arms and let them in, as he did with you as well. Much love to you and many blessings for you are a great people and many of you have important missions many of you here have important missions open up your heart and allow the word of god to possess you in some ways now you don't have to give up all these things that the church says you have to give up you only have to give up your love to God and he will give you all his gifts, all the things, all the power that you need to survive. He wants you to be happy and joyful and he does not want you to be sad. So if you are a sad Christian or a sad godly person, you're missing something because he wants that joy, that love, that beauty to shine forth because you'll never win anyone with a sad face but you will win them with the joy of your heart god bless you all thank you thank you very much i don't see any more questions on this side uh in, in actually Karen, there's a question from the Hangout chat, if I may. Sure, go ahead. Uh, Tarquette wants to know, or has asked, can you please tell us about the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the energy of God, the activation of God. God is pure energy. And as he was pure energy, he learned how to make light and matter and all things from this energy because energy is what is everything is made from. If you cut an atom in half, what comes forth but energy? But let me tell you about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is there to heal, to comfort, to be with you when there is no person to be with you god's energy in the in the in the sense of a spirit if you will in the sense of a spirit of healing and understanding and compassion jesus was his son 
in the sense of that he became a man, theanthropic, on the earth. Theanthropic meaning God-man. But the Holy Spirit is an activator, causes actions. At the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit lit on their heads and caused each one of them to speak in their and other people's tongues. And they understood one another and they were from many lands. It was a miracle. So the Holy Spirit is an activator, one who puts into actions the things of God. And he can possess you and he can heal you and he can be with you always. Thank you for that. There's also a follow-up question coming from the YouTube chat from uh, from Peter. He says, how can we be more in tune with the Holy Spirit? That is up to you when you pray to God, when you give yourself to God, when you give yourself over to <laughs> prayer, you are in touch with the Holy Spirit and your belief systems. When you believe in God, when you believe that he is who he says he is, then you can activate the Holy Spirit in your life because it is a matter of faith, a matter of belief, and a matter of love of God. Meditate, pray, and ask for healing, and the Holy Spirit will be there to help you. Believe, believe, and do not doubt. Thank you. Ruth is asking uh, in, the, in the chat, she's saying, how long did you live? And uh, yeah, what have you been doing in the spirit world for all of these millennia? Oh, I've made several visits to different places, but I have been... I do not know how long I lived, but it was a long life. I know that. I wasn't counting the years. And back then, in that day and age, once you reached a certain age, you did stop counting. I understand. Uh, she also asked um, about Jewish mysticism. Are there texts that uh, you have written that can be accessed? There are texts that I have written, but they are not available to the world as of yet. But they are sort of mystic in some ways because they tell of things that you are not aware of at this time. Prophetic, if you will. But let me tell you that I've been spending a lot of time waiting for this moment to recapture the energies of the earth and bring them into a greater understanding in God's understanding, God's wisdom, God's time frame. So we're bringing that information to you now. And you, there are many that are going to speak to you. Elijah will speak to you. The ascended masters such as Ish will speak to you. Uh, Isaiah will speak to you. Moses will speak to you eventually. And there will be others. There'll be those that you may not recognize their names, but they are, they are definitely people of God. And you will know that by what they say. Thank you. Um, uh, Jonathan, actually, he, he was the one that requested you. He's here, and he'd like to ask a question. Go ahead, Jonathan. Jonathan. Hey, Mark Isadek. Um I just wanted you, uh, if, is it possible for you to speak about the upcoming energies coming through in the coming days and weeks? I know everybody has some questions about that. And um, just well, there, is no, there is no exact time for these energies to come, but they are coming. And some of them are already here. The energies of joy and understanding and of change. The winds of change are coming. And they are coming very shortly, but they may not be exactly what you are expecting. And many think one way that they will be these great winds of glory and change and 
change people in an instant to light and or change them in many different ways but god does not want it to be exactly that way he wants it to be a, in a way that is more profound if you will i think you understand that jonathan oh yes i do very much i and i think you've already written about it i i have very much so and so you know what i'm saying yes it is hard to describe them these changes that are coming but they are coming <laughs> be prepared for them but the only way to prepare for these changes is with god's energy you cannot pre prepare by uh, gathering food and stuffing it in the basement or water you cannot prepare by uh, girding up your house you cannot prepare by going into the wilderness and learning how to do army tactics these are not the ways to prepare for what is coming for what is coming no one knows except for god and he is very specific about not telling you all the details specifically unspecific so therefore isn't that correct <laughs> it is <laughs> but he is specific about many things and one of those things is that it will it is for God, for the greater good of the people that these changes will come and these energies will arrive. Thank you. Um, do you does Jim need some water? Yes. Can someone in the room please? I do not know where it is. Oh. Sure. Thank you. Welcome. Was that all your questions, Jonathan? Uh, Yes, for now. Thank okay, you. Perfect. Okay, Dave has a question. Go ahead, Dave. Hello, Melchizedek. Greetings. Throughout your conversation, I felt a great resonance with everything you were saying and your blessing. And I was wondering if we are to focus more on the Melchizedek priesthood or the order of Melchizedek, is there a particular symbol that we can focus on or should we just focus on source energy if you wish to connect symbols are good if you need them but you just turn to God for your understanding and he will put the symbols on your heart you don't need them in the physical world you just need them in the places where God puts them and those symbols will resonate because they become part of you and they become part of his message to the world and so symbols outside they may have meaning in other ways for healing or compassion or whatever it is that they mean but when it, when it comes to god he puts his marks on the inside okay that makes perfect sense to me. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Thank you. Also, um, from the chat, there's a question about uh, uh, gematria, which is the, um, which is the, in in the Kabbalah or in the Hebrew language, the process of assigning a number to every letter and every letter having a meaning and a correspondent number. And they're wanting to know. The that, yes. Yes, it's wanting to know if that's something that can help humanity if used correctly, or is it demonic? No, it's not demonic. Let me tell you: when they made alphabets long ago, numbers and letters were assigned a, a number. Uh, each letter was a number, and every number was a letter. That is how the alphabet started in many ways so that they could assign an easier way to remember everything. So if A was one, B is two, C is three. So you see, you only had to remember one thing, sort of, and it was, you, you said it as it was. 
A, and it, if you wanted it to be a number, you put your finger up. And if you wanted it to be a letter, you put it on the paper or the papaya. Papyrus, as they called it. But there are many that did not have these languages or alphabets. But you're right. These, this did have a mysticism about it because not everybody was taught the numbers and the letters. And so uh, a mysticism arose around these alphabets because people didn't know what they really were. They saw people using them in higher courts, the priests and the, the greater members of the kingdoms. But the common people did not have these. And so therefore, they began to speculate that they were demonic or they had special properties because they were used by priests. <coughs> and so you get a lot of hocus pocus from a very simple alphabet that was also a number system. Thank you. Um, there's also a question uh, also going about um, what's going on with the weather in California and is this going to continue? Absolutely. The weather, the seismic activity, the volcanic activity, all these things, they cannot stop at this time because everything is out of proportion. The axis is off. And so that causes the weather to change because when it revolves, it's not revolving on the same uh, axis. It's not revolving on the same uh, kind of axis that it was on uh, revolving before. Also, you have energies from the center of the galaxy, energies from different places, all connecting with the Earth and causing different things. You also have man-made weather, which is also affecting things and making things worse and not better. It's actually cataclysmic, the way the weather is moving, because it's, they have created something they cannot stop. And because the axis is the way it is, it also affects the weather. <laughs> so all these different things, the energies, the axis, the man-made weather, all, all exasperate the conditions of this planet. But remember this, it all has purpose in God's eyes. That was it. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Ruth has a question I'm going to ask. She's having a hard time being online, so she typed the question. I'm sorry, Ruth. <laughs> so we'll, get her, we'll get her sorted out at some point. But she says, uh, she said she, you wanted to hear, if you can give from your perspective, your version of the Adam and Eve and the tree of life of good and evil story. What really happened uh, in the fall? Or is that even... A real thing that's what she would like to know it is just a story adam and eve or if it was not a, just the story if it were actually the truth then their children couldn't have run off to another land and gotten married there were other people around they were not the first humans but they were the first humans symbolically that believed in god that is the purpose of the Adam and Eve story, is they believed in God and they believed in spirit and they believed in the things outside of the earth. And they were the some of the very first. That was what they symbolized. And the, the snake <clears throat> symbolized the negativity that can seep in when your knowledge is strong you see negativity has already always been associated with intelligence isn't that interesting 
intellect, intellectual people are sometimes considered unspiritual because they believe in the sciences and they believe in things that are not spiritual. They believe that things were created differently and not by God. So the snake symbolizes something other than the God world, something other than the natural world and the, and the positivity that is here. And it symbolizes something creeping in to your thought processes that was not, um, that is not right. Because what is it about the, that tree of life, the apple to be, that the serpent was tempting, was to say, it's just an apple. There's nothing wrong with it. You can eat it. It will be fine. But what the, the reason why they shouldn't eat it is because they were told not to eat it. It was disobedience. And so that was the first sin, was disobedience. Okay, thank you for that. Marlene has a question. Marlene? Yes. Marlene. Perhaps not. Perhaps not. Um, there was an additional question about, and I don't know if this is something within your your knowledge, but about the animal. Oh, the animal mutilations that were going on with the ETs. Do you know anything? Why? What was the purpose of that? What was the purpose of the animal mutilations? Is that the question? Yes, the, the question was about the animal. When if, when ETs were first being discovered, there was a lot of uh, yes. animal mutilations, and and Ruth was just asking, what was the what was ultimately what was the purpose of that? Actually, um, I believe I was not there when that was happening. Sure. But my inform information tells me that sometimes they were being used for food. It were uh, they. There was lots of missing parts of these animals. Yes, um, they were being used for food by the, uh, what some would be calling the Bigfoot. Mm. There was many of these animal mutations in those areas where Bigfoot was seen the most, but they were just using the animals for food, and then when they realized that these were possessions of other people, the mutilation stopped. Let's see, okay. Um, Marlene is back, go ahead Marlene. No, yes, I apologize. My question is pertaining to history. Emperor Otto and Pope Sylvester II, uh, centuries back, um, took out large portions of our history and to shorten the years and now that the timelines are bended and jumped um how many days make up our actual year if we can can get information on this please well that is an interesting question because the year has been shortened uh well actually it's been shortened by one thing and lengthened by another the earth is slowing down, so that makes it longer, the days longer, slightly, just by minutes, of course. But it's been shortened by history in many senses. And you'll see that your seasons are not in full agreement with what they should be. And so you are about two days off from the actual, what your original year was. Thank you very much. Is that what you thought as well? Yeah, yes, I, I, I just want the validation on that. Thank you so much. Yes, it's about two days shorter. Thank you, Milky today. Thank You're you. Um, there's a question from Aaron. Come. 
Okay. Aaron, are you there able to unmute yourself? Okay. Uh, Sheer has a question. Go ahead, Sheer. I'm here. Yes. Go ahead, Aaron. Uh, to Kerr, I just want to say thank you for helping me with is, uh, the this operation. This is Melchizedek. Yes, I am Melchizedek. Oh, I'm sorry. That is all right. Well, thank you for sharing your information with us today. Um, I just came in as you're talking about uh, Adam and Eve. Ah, uh, yes. And I did help you with your project, but you just didn't know it. Ah, uh, well, thank you. You're welcome. Much love to you. Take care. Yes. Okay, thank you. And Sheer has a question. Go ahead, Sheer. Sheer. Shalom, How are you? Shalom. Um, in the few days, how, uh, how should I... Um, this past week, there was a lot of turmoil in Israel. First of all, uh, the Hamas shot uh, a lot of uh, rockets towards Israel. Israel all of a sudden decided to go for uh, a troops um, to cease fire. And then our Minister of Defense has resigned. And a lot of people here are uncomfortable with the way that the government uh, runs things. And now there's a, an election year in 2019, maybe even sooner because uh, he resigned. Can you tell me where is Israel is heading and why are those things are happening in a grand scale? Yes. Your country believes that it's being taken advantage of. And so therefore they are becoming an aggressor. They want to show the world that they are not going to take it. There has been some very interesting information that came to them whether it was not true or not they took it to heart and decided that these threats against them would not stand and so therefore they became the aggressor in many cases to show that they were not going to take it but the minister of defense backed down because he knew that these were just rumors and that it was there to do just that cause aggression so that is why he left because he knows that these actions from your country will will cause even greater turmoil there is a question all right okay can you tell me where is israel heading um, next year with the year of election maybe we would get rid of baby can you tell me that? I cannot tell you the future. The future is not yet molded because there are decisions to be made. Every decision can change the, the shape of the future. And in this case, there are many decisions still to be made. But I can tell you this. It is not heading in a good direction at this time. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, is there any questions? Actually, there's two questions here in our chat. Ian, do you have any questions on your side or not? No? Uh, no idea, no more questions. Okay, um, let me see if I can read this whole question. There's a very big question in the chat, so let me make sure that I'm reading it correctly. Okay. It says, um, do, extraterrestri do extraterrestrial spacecraft that hold 50 plus people have any use for monitors to look for various information? Also, um, he's heard that another species of human live really close to the humans in outer space, but they're much more advanced. The Kior are very human looking and they are more advanced by about 123 years. That may be the species he's looking at. 
The Nords also look very human, but they are much more advanced than that. Okay. Oh, oh I, the first question I, I asked incorrectly. He was saying, um, opposed, as opposed to holograms, which he hears are used for travel, I suppose, do yes. extraterrestrial spacecrafts um, that hold 50 plus people have any use for monitors to look at for various information? I, I don't quite understand the question, but. No, they don't need to, they can make monitors appear if they wish to uh, research something. But in guiding the ships, there's bio, bio material or organic material from each of the uh, pilots put into the technology so that it can be interfaced by only those that are uh, approved to steer and guide the ships. So therefore, if someone were to take over the ships, no one else could guide them but those people that are, uh, that have biology or organic matter attached to the technology. They do not need monitors to fly the ships. Mm -hmm. They can move their hands and move their bodies in special um, ways to turn and manipulate the ship. And so therefore monitors are not necessary for that. There's also ways to uh, speed up and slow down with the use of hand signals. Mm. <coughs> so many of the things on the ship are done through biotechnology. Okay. There's a follow-up question that asks, is it true that many of the species view us as always trying to hold each other back so the few yeah. can attempt to rule over others like what the cabal is doing? There are those species that do that, but not all. Okay. It depends on their, uh, how they have evolved and what kind of tragedies and travesties they have witnessed and become part of. These things always shade the future in some ways. There are some species that have very peaceful pasts and there are some that have very violent pasts. And so you see the future will be shaped by the past in many ways. Right. Thank, thank you for that. Also, Jonathan now has a question. Go ahead, Jonathan. Hey, um, I just wanted to see if you could share a little bit more about, uh, for everyone, about how, you're, uh, how you influenced uh, much of the writings and scriptural uh, texts that many people read. Uh, today, and maybe some that still haven't been read. Uh. I think th my greatest influence was my my actual example. I was an example of great peace, great love, great understanding. I did all the things God wanted me to do. I was a king on earth in the, in the sense of spirituality because that's what he gave for me to do and be. And so they they were influenced by God himself through me. I may be saying this differently than you wrote it down, but I, I think that it can be read many different ways. But I see that I was a light in a very dark place. And it, it shone very brightly, and I had to come out and give blessings to those that had great missions. And therefore, it was at those times that uh, I became seen and known. And these things caused the people to wander and, and fear God in the sense that they wanted to um, be a part of his, uh, be his plan, his kingdom. Is that what you were looking for? 
Um, yeah, th thank you very much for that. I was also hoping uh, j that you may be able to share a little bit about, uh, you know, for example, uh, in the New Testament, it talks about how uh, Jesus was a priest in the order of Melchizedek. And then you go oh, all the way back to the Old Testament and you also have references to Melchizedek. And not a lot of people know that. So I was just hoping yeah. that you could share oh, a little yeah. bit. Oh, I just that. didn't. Yes, Jesus, I was the first priest you will find me in Genesis. And so uh, Genesis is the first book of the Bible. And so it is just reflecting me onto Jesus and Jesus onto me. From the very beginning, God was with us. God, God was with me as a priest. And as Jesus was a part of the world, we were the same. Uh, I am the reincarnation or he is the reincarnation of me in some ways because he was also someone who changed the world that he was in thank you very much you're welcome thank you and there's one uh follow-up question in the chat it's from ruth and she says it's a request actually she says Melchizedek, please be with me and help me prepare my heart to be ordained in your priesthood in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any other questions on this side. Do you have any on your side? Is there any over there? I don't think so. No. Okay. I will bring through someone else then. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here and much love to you and namaste. Much love to you. Greetings, I am Takur. Welcome, Takur. Welcome. I am only here for a moment. There are many that want to come through. But I just wanted to come through and give you a very short uh, update on the, the ships and the, the Earth condition. There are many things happening, as you know, on your Earth. And uh, Mother Earth is still spewing out a great deal of, of energy and um there are very many volcanoes and seismic episodes happening along with the weather these things will be continuing for a while so do not expect them to stop anytime soon i just wanted people to know that because they a lot of people think that um it, it is almost over but these things are not so I just wanted to come and give you an update on that. Okay. There were people that had questions about safety areas. Uh, someone was asking if they were safe in Florida. Another was asking if they were safe in California. You're safe from what? In Florida, you're safe from volcanoes and earthquakes, but you're not safe from weather. Okay. In, in California, you're safe from hurricanes, but you're not safe from volcanoes and earthquakes. So depends on where you are, what you're safe from. Now, in this place where Jim is, they're pretty much safe from most things except for occasional tornadoes, ice, and snow. Okay, thank you. Thank but there are places that do not have high volcanic activity or high earthquake areas. So find those places uh, and go there if, if that is what you wish. Also, there are places that do not have great uh, and terrible weather yet. 
so you look for those places that are the safest. All right, thank you. All right. Hmm. Was there anything else that you wanted to share with us or did anyone have a question for Dakar, a quick one? Sheer, you had asked for Dakar. I do not. Hey, Dakar, how are you? I am very well, Sheer, how are you? Uh, I'm doing fine. Um, I want to ask you, I asked for a certain infusion and just want to know if it arrived to the group near and if it's already done. It is already started, but it's not finished. Uh, okay, thank you and much love. You're welcome. And if that is all the questions, then I will leave. I, I have one. There is a question here. Uh, it feels like I have a cap on this on my head. Is that true? Um, a cap? Uh, something on my head. Yes. Thanks. And why is that? I have no idea. All right. That's all I want to know. I am. I cannot investigate it at this time. Yes. There is a question. Yes. Where? Aaron. Aaron, do you have a question? Perhaps not. All right, I will go and let the next one come. There are others waiting. Much love. Greetings, this is Babaji. It is good to be with you today. What can I help you with? Marlene. Thank you very much. This is Marlene speaking. Thank you, Babaji, for being here. It is uh, my to be here, yes. Thank you. Um, I understand that uh, many Eastern Indian Masters are now uh, again taking part in the Ascension program or in the Ascension process. Oh, absolutely, yes. Yes. Um, can you expand on um, how the awakened ones can concretely contribute from your perspective, from your realm, on a spiritual level? but bringing down into actions that are done by the awakened humans, please. They must, they must call on us. We are, some of us are here in the earth plane already. Yogananda is here, you know, Kutumi may be here. I am not sure all the ones that are here, but you must call on us so that we may, help you take action. There is no way for us to force ourselves into an active state with anyone without your permission. We do not work with, like that. So in order for us to be able to take action with you, we must have your permission and you must call on us. But you have specific talents, each and every one of you. And as you are n knowing what these talents are, you must grow them and act upon them. And we can help reinforce these great talents within you. So to be an active part of the human race is for you to call on us as you would call on God or on any of spirit from outside your realm we are we are working with god on all these things and we can help individuals with their particular missions if they choose to call on us 
Thank you. Is this how you are talking? Yes, in parts. Um, how are you doing your work with us right now from the oh. spiritual realm? I am speaking like this to many people. I am also being with my the chosen ones that have have given their loyalty to, to me, and I am coming to them and giving them strength, understanding, and wisdom to move forward to make sure that they are uh, moving in the right direction and taking heed of their own mission and gifts. I am also speaking through people like yourself to others, bringing messages to the world. And um, is this what you're looking for? I, I sense that you're looking for a particular answer. Do you have a fractal of yourself on planet right now? Oh, yes, of course, yes. Thank you. Thank you. And that is what, and if that is what you were looking for, yes. There is a fractal of Yogananda, there is a fractal of Kutumi, there's a fractal of Babaji, there's a fractal of the original Buddha. Uh, yes, there are many of us that have come back to this world for, in, in a small way, to help hold the light, to help move forward the ascension, to help bring people understanding that is not clear. Pertaining to yourself, Babaji, I feel that there is someone very, very close to me, um, which is part of you. Ooh, that is correct. Um, thank you so much. You are very welcome. Remember to show your joy to everyone. When I was on the earth as, as a human being, the joy was coming from us and people would note our joy and our happiness and sense of humor, yes. And this is a part of God as well. He is not dry. Um, Babaji, there's a question from within the chat from Renee. She's saying, oh, this was a question for Takar, but I think uh, this is a very appropriate question for you. Very good. She would like to know what are the three most important things we can do now to prepare for our ascension? You can pray, you can protect yourself, and you can expect to move through these days more easily if you pray and protect. Okay. Thank you. And then there are, many, there are several ways we can tell you how to do move <laughs> through these these days on the earth. But do not think that it will be easy. It is not going to be all that easy sometimes. Thank you. There's a question from uh, Talmu. She's asking, is it uh, is it necessary to be vegan to achieve ascension? No. If that were the case, there would only be a few people ascending. Perfect. Um, let me explain why, though. Yes. The belief system. You see, if you believe you can get to heaven without being a vegan, you can. Because God listens to your beliefs as well because his belief is in you he is the one that brings you up it is not that you bring your up yourself up though but you your belief systems can overcome many things you see love covers a multitude of sin have you ever heard of that I'm sure that everyone well, covers a multitude of sin. What does that mean? That means that you can be 
a sort of mischievous person. You can be sort of even nasty. But if you have great love and you show your great love, that God is looking at that and not at your mischievous behavior. <laughs> Thank you. There's some giggles back there. Some mischievous people are probably in your room over there. I have a feeling that there's some mischievous people here. And they want to overcome it with love. Yes, not meat. So No. That was a you cannot overcome uh, God with meat. No. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Aaron has a question. Let's give Aaron a chance to unmute. So go ahead, Aaron. Here I am. Yeah, I was just curious if uh, I could call upon your blessings as you were speaking earlier. Of course. I will give you my blessing always. Thank you. And oh, one moment. Thank you. Was that it, Aaron? Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was a good blessing for you. Thank you. You will come to find that it is a healing blessing. Thank you. Um, would you be able to help me with my abilities and that kind of stuff you're talking about earlier? Of course. Great. You are willing to listen and understand. I am willing to teach and to lift up people and ideas and, and show you the light that is there in front of you that sometimes it is very hard to see when the light is really sh showing uh, in front of you because you're not looking at it. You're looking everywhere but at the light because you don't want to be blinded by it, but you want to be guided by it. But the thing is this, many are not looking for the light to shine in front of them. They are just looking to get through each day one day at a time but if you look for god's guidance it is there and if you look for god's uh, understanding it is there but you have to look for it it doesn't just show up usually it doesn't just show up it can but it usually doesn't show up without you bringing it in or asking for it thank you Thank you. Sure. I don't have any other questions on our side. I don't know if you do on yours. Very well. Nothing it was here. a very nice time. Yes? Nothing here. Can I oh. ask a question? Yes, there is a question. Okay. Yes. From Giggly back there. Okay. I feel like I, when I've seen pictures of your cave, that I was in your cave with you and studied under you. There were times when you did. Could yes. you tell me my name back then? Vrindzia. Can you say it again? Vinzia. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, there are those that studied under me. Yes. Perfect. Well, Baba, I was looking for you in the Himalayas when I was there last year, but I did not find you. So I will I will look for you again this year. When oh, I'm you will find me. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I am always there, but sometimes I do not make myself available if I have other things that I'm doing. So maybe next time I will be available. Thank you. I will keep looking. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right. I think there is one more person ready to come. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Much love to you all. Much love to you.
is very difficult to speak to you. Our languages are so different. Are you AI? No. Oh, I you? am insectoid. Oh, welcome, insectoid. Do you have? Do you go by a name, or can you give us a name? Okay. I said right. Close enough. Thank you very much. Uh, we do. We are speaking through translators. Your language is difficult. Yes. Well, we appreciate your patience and and working with the translators and coming to us. There are some questions in your room already. Uh, if you would be read, willing to take some questions. Of course. Go ahead. Speak. Hi, Barbara here. I have been feeling you around, not you yourself, but others like you around lately. Is there a contact here in regards to learning or some other form? Learning what? I maybe speak in your language better. There is no teachers here, but I can send perhaps information. Why do you want to speak with us? Because I'm very interested in your culture and who you are. Our culture is very different than yours. We do not live the same way. We have more of a hive mentality. At least our species is more communal. Okay. Yours but is vastly separated. Now, insectoids are different than praying mantises, or is it pretty much the same? I mean, they are a different kind of insect. We are not the same. Then may I say something that listen to you in your language then? If you can speak it. If I can. Yes, interesting, mostly clear, mostly clear. Thank you. Thank you. you are welcome. Thank you. There's a question in the chat. Uh, Ruth, she's asking, or she's making a statement, but I'll read it just in the entirety. She says, the praying mantis are an ET race here. I don't know if that's a question. And what should we think and communicate to them when we see them? Do you see them? I believe, sorry, I believe that she does have praying mantis uh, in her garden vicinity. So she's asking, I, I think she's asking, are they an ET race here? Or she's either making the statement that they are an ET race. And she's you, like, should we? The ET race that is sentient and intellectual are very different than your praying mantises here. Okay, thank you. They look different in stature and color. They are much larger and stand on two legs. Their wings are much smaller at this time. Their faces are not as insectoid looking as they once were. Okay. So the mantid beings are not, the mantids that are here, the small... They are not 
They're not the ETs. The same. Okay. Thank you very much. It's clear. Okay. Um, was it had the question? Uh, Christine has a question. Go ahead, Christine. Greetings and blessings. Um, <clears throat> when I was taking an anthropology class a long time ago, there was a group of people that they showed in the college that um, spoke with clicks and um, humming and so on and so forth. And I understand, and they were very short and they lived in a forest. Um, and I understand they were removed for their protection by um, insectoids or the praying mantis or them because they were, will we ever get that particular language back? Because um, I really liked it, you know. It was the, the original languages of the Hopi and the Anasazi. Oh. They had the ant people here. We are not the ant people. They speak a different language and look very different. But they were friends with humans many long centuries ago. This but not an out an outline or an out I am not sure of the word for a different species that mixes the humanoid with the insectoid. This group was in um, Africa. Yes. I do not think that that was the ant people then. That was a different species altogether. Will we ever um, bring back that um, musical um, language? Will we ever have that back? Yes, I am sure. Once the contact of firsts happens, that many will return to your world for many reasons. Thank you and blessings. Yes, thank you. I am sorry that it is difficult for me to speak. Um, we appreciate your effort and, and your patience and your willingness to be here. There's a question from Marsha. She says, when, why when she goes to ground at her tree, are there bees inside now? I don't understand the question. <laughs> I believe she is asking why have the bees taken residence in the tree? Yes, I believe you're right. I believe that they find it a suitable home, and therefore it is natural for them to take residence in such a place. It must also feel safe for them in some way. Right. Can you tell us a little about your society and where you come from? I am from Epsilon Sun in Andromeda. That is how your scientists would describe it. Are you are you an observation of our planet or in any way interactive with our planet? Not interactive, observing, yes, mm -hmm. but not interested in your species as friends because they are too different at this time. 
it's the communication stick. perhaps when you evolve more we will encourage a friendship do you travel via ships or or anything like that are you, are you actually within the space are you traveling within space because of our evolution and our use of vibration for detecting objects we have become interdimensional vibration can open portals and that we have learned so you travel via interdimensional travel correct mm -hmm. and so if if you were to come onto this planet what why would you only to just ex experience it or is there something you would be looking for i um, would wish first of all to be able to interact with your people in a natural way mm -hmm. and also to explore your many cultures but at this time you are too different i see i see it would be too difficult um there's a question uh, from the chat asking about uh insects uh people humans in in their multiple incarnations do sometimes human other souls incarnate as insects it has happened all things happen we have learned that there is nothing impossible do you know anything about communicating with the earth's insects is there a way that humans can communicate more directly with the earth's insects yes they use vibrational sound as well for much of their communications and directions we can interact and understand some of your species of insects but if a human wanted to also communicate with an insect like such as like a spider or bugs that maybe come in our own home how would that be done so that it would be a positive interaction but and not a negative interaction they would have to learn the frequencies that they vibrate on and use them correctly to interact emotionally with them for they do not feel or have a language but they sense and have a s sense of emotion and that tells them about danger or positivity or acceptance or many of these different things hmm. there's a question from uh wendy if you if you will take it thank you we know. yes hello yeah hello i believe you've already answered part of my question in our interactions with the insects on our planet do we then are we able to then more able to interact with other insectoid species um you know in in the universe if if you learn one of your earthly insect languages it could help for you you to decipher other insect languages off of your world but they are not exactly the same but use similar principles to communicate yes i feel as if i communicate with them telepathically and 
perhaps even through the light languages on uh, different levels. I had an experience recently where there were, on two separate occasions, two walking sticks that we call them here on earth and I haven't seen them actually since I was a child and I was wondering I felt on both occasions that there was some sort of communication or message perhaps that they were trying to translate to me do you is there any comment you could make about that that species of insect is highly sensitive to different kinds of vibrational stimulation other than what you mentioned before such as spiders or beetles they have a longer body and it does resonate in a different way with the sounds and vibrations of the planet also, when you are speaking, you may be resonating as the sound of thunder or the sound of other winged animals, and they do respond to these kinds of vibrational outputs, tonally and vibrationally your voice could actually duplicate some of these resonances. Thank you very much. I, I felt that as well. And my only other question is about, I always seem all of my life to be surrounded by what we here call ladybugs. Um, I, I just feel a special attraction to them. Um, is there anything, anything you could comment about that? That's my last question. I am not familiar completely with this ladybug. I have a library of human insects here, and they are interesting. They seem to not mind being on the human skin. Yes, they're very loving. I feel very loving energy from them. That's why I was wondering. They are of a different resonance and frequency than most insects. Thank you. Many blessings. Good. On your on your planet, there you are the are you the master race there? Are you the primary dominant race on your planet? And uh, are there insects and other animals and things and anything that is human-like on your planet? There are three sentient species with intellect on our planet. There is a tree species they are slightly less evolved. They started to speak a thousand years after we did. And there's also a sea creature called the Vindara that also is sentient and intellectual. I can imagine based on your physiology that one of the biggest problems that will you will encounter when being face to face with a human is a human not, not having the experience or the knowledge to realize that you are cognitive and, and, and more than a giant insect because that's our only experience. So what is it that we would look for 
if we were to have the fortune of coming face to face with you and how would should we interact with you if we do if you could vibrate or your voice could send off a positive frequency we would know that you are safe so a screaming human would would not send out a safe positive no. vibration humming or this kind of sound would be most acceptable in the higher frequencies most notably thank you for that are there any other questions on your side? I don't see any on our side. I have one question. Sure. There is one. Is there the ability to actually uh, communicate mind to mind with insects? Telepathy exists because there is the evolution of the vibration and so sonar system that becomes a language unto itself and then there is the spoken language so there are more than one communication ways on insect for insects i try to communicate with them telepathically they are telepathic and vibrationally languaged okay also have we have a spoken language for particular other reasons hi Barbara again this, this may it may have just been a fluke but i was walking around and i was uh saw this insect it was very beautiful and i was talking to him in your language for a long time sending love and beauty to him and then when i got done i'm walking away he's following me around the building was there like a connection there from talking insectoid you might have interacted or locked into his vibrational sonar okay. Thank you. this would cause or perhaps indicate that you were wanting to mate <laughs> oh my oh, God. i'm embarrassed <laughs> <laughs> we made it yeah. like a uh, blush um there, there is a, there's a couple more questions and, and we're running out of time so just to follow up because of the just it just seems to me that because of the sheer size of a human versus an insect when you are making sounds at it, the sound frequency is very big for their tiny little ears to pick up. And so is there, going back to, uh, Ian has a question about do insectoids or and or insects, and sorry to uh, put you in the same category of bugs, that's our own ignorance, not having a full understanding of your civilization or your but it's our only frame of reference that we do have. Do, do, do you like music? And, and is that a way to communicate with you? And if so, what type? And, and of what vibration should we be aiming for? Um, high, low, what are the vibrational tones and or frequencies that? Uh, higher tones are more acceptable. And yes, we do have a musical sensibility but it is not like your music okay would you be able to do because of your i'm assuming and i may be wrong are you as big or bigger or smaller than humans in, in we are larger than humans so us using our voice and you using we can audibly hear your voice if you're speaking your language. Is yeah. that correct? Okay. Yes. 
Yes. Okay. Our audible language is in clicks and sounds. They are usually of higher frequencies. Can we hear them? Okay. Thank you. Um, Wendy does have a question. Go ahead, Wendy. Yes, just very briefly, you mentioned earlier about the hive mentality, and we hold the bees here on Earth as in very high regard because, of course, they are one of the most important pollinators here on Earth and responsible for our food supply and chain. Um, can you comment what message, if anything, the bees might be giving to us as with respect to a hive mentality and also the seeming disappearance of some of our bees? In a hive mentality, each one is born with a specific usefulness. And they do not need to communicate that to anyone. But when the certain situations arrive, they immediately respond with that particular usefulness. And so therefore, all are doing a separate job but are corresponding in a way, way that suits the hive in a positive manner. Does that make sense to you? Perfect sense. In this way, our hive community can also operate very efficiently without direction if a situation arises that we are all aware of we do what we need to do and we work together and are successful do you need a drink yes that was exactly the answer that i was anticipating thank you very much and thank you for being with us today you are welcome. We've come to the end of our time. Um, so we would like to thank you so very much and apologize if our questions were. Uh, it's no need to apologize. We realize our differences. Thank you for that. I would suggest this is only just a suggestion. If you do come in our, in our reality, which you are welcome to do please wear some kind of sign with English words on them saying to the fact that we cannot communicate in our language because we do not speak your language, but we are here in peace. That will solve a lot of issues and it probably allay a lot of fear. So that's my, that's my suggestion. That's my pro tip for uh, if you come to visit our planet because you are very welcome. So. Thank you. I think. Well, it, it's, it's not a joke. It's just a, I, I was imagining if you were to suddenly walk out of a portal. I do not know if wearing a sign would be appropriate. Well, it would solve a lot of communication issues because I think communicating would be very difficult. That's my only point. In any case, perhaps when we get a little closer communicatively we will share our thoughts thank you very much and thank you for being here much love much, much love. love Hello. Hi, Jim. Thank you. Welcome back. Hi. Hi. How are you feeling? I'm feeling fine. How are you feeling? <laughs> I guess I'm okay. We had some interesting guests today. Guests we've oh. never spoken with before. So. Yes. Uh, the insect. I saw, I heard the insect. Yeah. How does that feel? The insect. How does he f feel? Jittery. Mm. Very jittery. Mm. Jittery in a nervous way or jittery in a... No, just 
energetic. Like they have a lot of they have a lot of things going on in their body or something. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you so very much. Next week, everybody, we're going to have Wendy uh, with her light languages here. Wendy from Lang uh, Languages of Light, she'll be here. So you can tune in next week. And then in two weeks, you'll be back, Jim, right on the 1st of December. Yes, I'll be back on the 1st of December. All right. So I'll see you then. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, should we end with a blessing? Of course. Who I wants to do a I'd blessing? I'd like to do one. Who else would like yeah. to do one? Karen? Okay, yeah. good. Who Can else? You do one in the beginning, please let me know. I will, too, if anybody else. Uh, you did one in the beginning. Do one. See if we can Barbara get will do one. Barbara, okay. Anyone else? Okay. Okay. We'll do Wendy as well. Go ahead. Who was, who's first? Wendy, go ahead. Go first. Okay, doc. Nishimia, Lucoriando, Chevaliando, Zaba, Jagiana, Ziza, Zabega, Zagia, Jambaria, Zozovla, Jamana, Zagela, Zaziana, Gris, Zobogoja, Zengaria, Jajoma, Zalia, Zobogoa, Gagia, Naniaja, Caliando, Zogora, Jagia, Zaliana, Kai, Shonotere, Shamaka. Namaste. Thank you for this beautiful day and for the way God guides us each and individually to suit us in keep us in his care in the in a very personal and effective way. We love you and we ask for your guidance always and we know that you are there for us whenever we need help. We just praise you and thank you for all that you have done for us. Amen. Amen. Saya mashkaliya sati tukurshiyali rama niya saya koyamini dora yaliya siyamande yakiya mandugu niya yashaliya si tukumia daria lekara pesia leko shumia lerka sida tikara paria pesi samaliya sha tiyama shandia ikambaya roya malala kira. Break away from the mundane and find your highest excitement, for that is where you belong. You belong with a play, in a place where you are doing things that make you happy, make you satisfied, and please God. So continue to find who you are and let that beautiful energy break forth and burst forth. Thank you. Barbara, mm -hmm. go ahead. The range of understanding between all species is varied, but between your own people, it should be a united. So learn to communicate one with another in a very humane and beautiful way so that you are no longer causing problems but being peaceful. Okay. Very good. So thank you, have, Jim. Thank you, Karen. Have a wonderful day, everybody. You too. See you. Much love. Karen, you want to take us off air? <laughs> You're mute.